I wanted to make my own blast gates for dust collection, so I got started by cutting down some MDF on my trailer. I got them down to final size on my table saw. A blast gate, simply put, is a little door that opens and closes a pipe that connects a power tool to a dust collector. Since you can have multiple tools connected to the same dust collector, a blast gates allow you to direct the vacuum to the power tool that you're using. Why would you build your own blast gates in the first place? I mean, these are like $10, but they're kind of crappy in many ways. So the inside diameter of this is smaller than the inside diameter of the pipe, so it reduces the airflow a little bit. They're extremely leaky. You can kind of see directly in there if you look close enough. There's no way to mount this to a wall or to anything solid because there's nothing to screw into, so it's just kind of hanging in free space. In my experience, they get majorly jammed up with sawdust in the little crack there. Uh, you have to pick it out with a needle or it won't close all the way like this one. But the biggest nuisance of all is that you actually got to physically open and close this to operate it. I'm going to fix all of that with my design. After some layout, I can get started using my router and a circle jig to route some really shallow grooves that will hold a gasket. But Scott, I'm confused. What are you talking about? Fine. Let's look at the design, shall we? The whole premise of this gate is gonna be that it will rotate instead of sliding like these. And the biggest reason for that is because it's gonna be motorized. Motorized? Yeah, motorized. <laughs> Because why bend over and manually open a gate when we have the technology to do that for us? To avoid any sawdust jamming up like this one, I'm going to cut vents in it so I can blow some compressed air in there to keep it all clean. There's gonna be an integrated bracket on the side so I can permanently mount it to a wall or something else solid. There'll be gaskets encompassing the gate so that hopefully there'll be a better air seal. The pipe will be held snugly from the outside so that there won't be any reduction of the inside diameter. You got it? Good. I cut the groove around for the gasket and now I can use the same router and compass on one single side to cut the opening for the pipe to enter. I'm gonna use this first side as a template for the other sides that I have to make. The hole took a few tries with the compass to get the correct diameter for a perfect fit. When you use a router with a compass to make a complete circle, make sure to leave some tabs so that the workpiece is supported. Otherwise, it'll spaz out and ruin it. Take a router with a flush trim bit and flush off those tabs after. I quickly traced out the opening to the rest of the sides, then I drilled a pilot hole and used my jigsaw to rough out the circles for the rest. As someone who's used to using a lot of double-sided tape, I was a little reluctant to do the whole painter's tape and super glue trick. To me, it seemed like a whole lot of extra work, but it actually has a really firm hold on the workpiece, and it's a little bit easier to clean up than the double-sided tape I was using before. I used the first side as a template to duplicate the exact opening of the first side that I made with a bearing-guided router bit. This is the pocket that I need to cut out to mount the servo motor to the side of the gate. I used the fence on my router table with stop blocks attached to route out the pocket in two steps. There's nothing like pairing MDF with a chisel to make you feel real good about your non-existent hand tool skills.
Next, I will start to work on the gate itself by drilling a hole where the motor will mount at the pivot point and use that with a compass to mark the layout. I roughly cut it out on the bandsaw and sand it down to my line at the edge sander. Then I roughed out the opening and I flush trimmed it with the side I used before. Then I could stick the rest together, rough them out, and flush them up with the first gate I made. So somehow when I initially cut the pieces on my table saw, I did not realize that the table saw blade was not at 90 degrees. It was actually at something like 88 degrees, which resulted in a slight bevel cut on most of the parts. There was enough meat left on it, so I managed to stick a pipe through two of the gates, lining them up, and I ran it through the table saw again to make those edges 90 degrees. Now I just need to make the small bottom bracket with the vents in it, and I start by cutting up some quarter inch MDF. For the vent holes, I first tried to drop plunge it on the router table, but I don't really have the correct bit to do that, and it was a lot of effort because of that. It was easier to drill a pilot hole on the drill press slightly smaller so that bit could pass right through. I used stops on the fence again for repeatability. I took this opportunity to countersink the holes in the vent bracket. For the gaskets, I first tried to use this thin craft foam. I cut it with a little compass that I cobbled together and it cut quite easily. I glued it to the sides with CA glue. The craft foam was actually pretty easy to cut, but I wasn't pleased with how much friction the craft foam had between the side and the gate. So I wanted to try something else, so I used some stiffened felt. The stiffened felt required a little more effort to cut than the craft foam, but overall I think it worked out much better. Then I can drill the rest of the holes and screw it all together. I used a single sheet of paper to add a little bit of clearance for what felt like the right amount of friction between the gate and the sides. Back at the router table, I could flush up the excess material from the brackets. Finally, I could round over all the corners. In total, I made four of these, which is not enough. So I made three more of these double blast gates. I don't believe that they're really gonna save a whole lot of space, but they will save a bit of wiring and a couple of motors. It took me longer than I care to admit, but I eventually got all of my tools connected to two one horsepower dust collectors. I got one of these fancy bendy deals for the drill press. Jury's out if that's gonna work out well or not, but I'm curious to try. 
This is admittedly the first time I've hooked my bandsaw up to dust collection before, and I'm really looking forward to having less dust in the air as I'm resawing. This is gonna be the overhead dust collection at the router, and I got this stiffened sort of pipe so I don't need it attached to the fence. It can just hang over the workpiece if I'm not using the fence. For my dust collection at my new to me jointer planer, I'm not really sure about my future workflow for this, so I'm gonna save that for a future date. So overhead on the central workstation, I have three things going on up here. This first one is going to the overhead router collection. This second one will be the overhead table saw collection, which will be a future video. And the third one here is going to be a general sort of cleaning up the area. Surprisingly, there's not much available on the market for an elegant solution here, so I think I'm gonna try and DIY an acrylic chute for my next video. So be sure to stick around for that one. Mm. 